you this evening. We have a wonderful lesson this evening. We have a lot of material to cover. So get your pen, get your pencils, get your paper, and uh, let's dive into the word of God. Let's dive into the word of God. Our lesson tonight be coming out of Ephesians 4, verse 27. Ephesians 4, verse 27. And for a thought tonight is, do not give the devil a foothold. My God, do not give the devil a foothold. And, uh, and a thought to go in conjunction with our main thought is, don't give Satan the advantage. Yes. Don't give Satan the advantage. One may ask, how can we give the devil, Satan, get a foothold or the advantage? Well, let's get started. One, you, you might want to write this down. You might want to write this down. Satan may gain advantage through our Ignorance, yes, yes. Satan may gain advantage through our ignorance. Second uh, Corinthians two and eleven, King James reads: "Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices." Yes, if we see. Paul is speaking to the Corinthians right now. He said, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Such an advantage could be gained by Satan either by the despair of an individual Christian or the disunity of the local assembly through the incident in view. And then it says, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Paul knows that Satan can and will use this incident to distract and diminish the work of God in the Corinthian assembly unless it is properly handled. Yes, yes. Satan's first attack is against the gospel. Oh, my, my, my. Satan's first attack is against the gospel. That in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Now, if he can bring this unity to the church, which is the agent of propagating the gospel, then he will also bring this honest upon the gospel. The church, which God can best use is the church with excludes is 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 is, is God forgiveness and, and 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 God constellation. Yes, 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 that's that the church with God can use best is his church, God's church, forgiveness and constellation. Uh, and 2 Corinthians 11 and 13, 11 and 3 said. Paul is speaking right here. Now, we're still talking about how Satan can get the advantage through our ignorance. Everybody, some folks just think they're just so smart. They, th <laughs> they just think they just know everything. From, from Genesis through Revelation. But Paul in 2 Corinthians 11 and 3, he said, but I fear. Paul is saying something right there. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through the subtility, so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. We see the first three words, but I fear. Paul was afraid that they were in danger of being deceived by the devil. That is the serpent. And led astray from pure devotion 
to Christ because they were willing to put up with false teaching. My God, false teaching which amounted to another Jesus. Uh-huh, uh-huh, another Jesus, uh, a different spirit, mm-hmm, a different gospel. That's in 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. It said, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if we receive another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, good God Almighty, <laughs> which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. See, the thing is, uh, uh, see, Satan can take advantage through an individual through their ignorance. Mm-hmm. Accepting all types of teaching, all type of doctoring, all type of this, all type of that. They want to add to the word. They want to take away from the word. But how, but how do you know these things unless you study the word yourself? Hosea 4 and 6, it said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. So therefore, if, if the, so, the, so the devil can take advantage of us very easily through our ignorance. He said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Pinpoint the cause of man's problem. Uh-huh. Lack of knowledge. Now, the lack, don't miss this, the lack of knowledge does not stem from a shortage of information, but rather from information rejected. Uh-huh. The result of this will be that Israel will be removed from its place as God's representative to proclaim his revelation to the world. Now, let me say that again. The lack of knowledge does not stem from a shortage of information, but rather the information being rejected. Everything we need to know is in the word of God. There is no shortage of information in the word of God, but <laughs> rather the information being rejected. My God, my God, it's good to see my, my dear friend in the Bible study with us this evening, Brother Jerry. I thank God that you stopped by to come to Bible study with us. Uh, Brother Jerry and I, we done known one another over 26 years by the grace of God. And he is my brother and he is my friend. Good God Almighty. It's... God's way or no way. <laughs> Let me say that again. <laughs> Everybody, some, some folks think God got a gray area. <laughs> they could lean this way. <laughs> they could put the, you, oh, let me, I can put my toe in the water instead of putting my whole foot in the water. <laughs> you know, some folks be thinking like that. God got a gray area. I'm just gonna put my I'm gonna put one toe in that water. Since I ain't gonna put my whole foot in it, I guess it'll be all right. But God don't work like that. Satan may gain advantage through our carelessness. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of carelessness going on in the body of Christ. Carelessness. First Peter 5 and 8 said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So that telling you right there, uh, the devil is on our trail. He, Peter is telling us to be sober means to be self-disciplined, to think rationally. Not 
foolishly. Be vigilant means to be alert, to be spiritual, uh, to be alert to the spiritual pitfalls of life. Mm-hmm. And take appropriate step to make sure that we do not stumble. Mm. Your adversary, Satan, is on our avowed. Satan is our avowed enemy. He never ceases from being hostile toward us. Satan never sleeps. He don't. He don't. He don't. He don't. He, he always on the job. He always looking and creeping and seeing where he can get in. So therefore, we have we 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 have to constantly be before the Lord. He said he is like a roaring lion. Mm -hmm. And you know what the sad part is? Some of us think we got outsmart Satan. Now, Satan, who was Lucifer, was kicked out of heaven with a lot of angels. Satan, no, where well, I put Lucifer, seen God's glory. And here we are, we think we can outsmart him. He attacks when least expected and desire to destroy completely those whom he attacked. Five and nine say resist him. Okay, let's look at this word resist him. Uh-huh, resist him. We are not commanded to run, but to resist. Don't miss this. To fight rather than flee. Victory comes when we remain committed to God because he is greater than our enemy. Now, when we are commanded not to run, you better have the Lord on your side. Uh-huh. When we are commanded to fight, God is going to fight our battle. Matthew 12, 43 to 45. Now, Jesus is speaking right here. Uh, may I have a reader? Um, uh, Minister Coleman, would you grab that mic, please? Matthew 12, verses 43 through 45. Read that for us, please. Matthew 12, 43 through 45. Yes. King James. Amen. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man... He walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Mm. Even so shall it be also unto his wicked generation. In layman term, what does all that mean to you? Just break it all the way down. When a man's... Mm, unclean spirit means he's just walking dead. Mm-hmm. Just going around and finding nothing. Nothing. Then he goes back to where he came from. Watch out now. And then he comes back worse. We come back worse. Yes, sir. Thank you. Awesome. 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 He left alone, but he brought some 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 company back with him. Worse than he is. Worse than he was. See, Jesus give a striking parable of this precarious spiritual condition of the nation. The parable is that of a house well swept, but unoccupied. The demon having been driven out. Mm -hmm. 
but finding no place to rest, returned with seven other spirits, resulting in an even greater <laughs> degeneration. In using this illustration, Jesus clearly indicated that through the Jew, he had been, the, the Jew had been cleansed from their idolatry by the severity of the Babylonian exile. Their unbelief and hardness of their heart was in danger of producing an even worse moral condition than when they were idolaters. The moral reformation that had taken place after the captivity should have prepared Israel for the, for the ministry of John and Jesus. Unfortunately, in most cases, it fell short that Israel's spiritual house was empty. We got to ask ourselves, how is our spiritual house empty? I'm going to ask somebody on, 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 who's listening to this broadcast. Is your spiritual house empty? Because if your spiritual house is empty, you are in a bad condition. You are in a bad situation. Only by inviting Christ to occupy uh, 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 the position of an honored guest and the head of the home, uh, you will be blessed. Well, 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 let me just bring it all the way down. If Christ is not in you, then the devil is in you. Let me make it real plain for somebody out there. And you got your house empty. Well, you think you got your house. See, the devil wants you to think you got your house empty when he in the house. <laughs> Good God Almighty. We all need to ask ourselves, what's in my house? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Satan may gain advantage through our indifference. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, Satan can gain the advantage. Satan can, Satan can get a foothold on us through our indifferences. Matthew 13, 25 through 29, Jesus used the parable of the tares. He said, but while a man slept, that's enough right there. The whole lot of us sleeping on duty. <laughs> Just <laughs> Yeah, 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 snoring on spiritual duty. I mean, yeah, yeah, you got your mouth open, your head, your spiritual mouth cocked open, your head back, and you just snoring, sleeping on spiritual duty. But while the man slept, his enemy came in. Good God Almighty. And sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade were sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servant of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not uh, sow good seeds in thy field? Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody was sleeping on duty. Uh, and he said, From whence then has it tares? He won't know where it came from. Got a question mark right there. He asked a question. He said unto him, an enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Mm. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather the, up the tares, the root up also the wheat with them. Okay, okay. This parable serves as a warning to the laborers in the field. Because if we not on duty, if we not vigilant, if we not sober, we're going to have some indifferent seeds in the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to have some, uh, some old, some old, some old lookalike seeds. Uh-huh. Which is the world, uh, in verse 38. Now, unlike the Jews from the kingdom of in the Old Testament was citizens 
could be easily recognized during the church age convert will be made from all over the world and receive upon their profession of faith. Thus, it will be easier to slip in some counterfeits who profess what they do not possess. Now, the kingdom of God refers to the church, which is the subject of these parables. The enemy is Satan. Mm-hmm. And the tares uh, denote uh, Darnell's. That is a type of weed that look like a wheat. False converts. Indifferent in the church. We, Satan can gain advantage by utilizing counterfeit Christians. There's a whole lot of counterfeit Christians in the church house. Mm-hmm. The, the Darnell was a weed that resembled wheat, but did not come to fruition. The good seed, the, now this is the good seed, it sprung up and brought forth fruit. Again, emphasizing the, that true convert produce fruitful lives. If you want to know somebody, uh, 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 a true born again Christian. See what kind of fruit they bear. Mm-hmm. Some of them jump, shout, fall on the floor. Act like they done. I don't know what they do. Well, they, they, they act all kind of ways. But their actions are saying one thing. And the tree is bearing another thing. I never seen an apple tree talk. I never seen an orange tree talk. So just keep bearing good fruit. You don't have to hoop. You don't have to holler. You ain't got to ran and tear. You ain't got to walk around and squeeze your Bible. Uh, uh, half of them squeezing the Bible. It's sad to say a whole lot of folks squeezing the Bible going to hell. The preacher here to tell you. I know y'all don't want to hear that because we got some, we got a whole lot of folks squeezing the Bible and don't know nothing about the Bible. Don't let Satan catch you sleeping and slipping on the job. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. May I have another reader? Sister, sister. Want to read for us today? Yeah, give her that mic. Yeah, give her that mic. Give her the sister Deneen going to read for us. Matthew 12 and 30. Matthew 12 and 30. Go ahead. When you get there, Matthew 12. Matthew 12 and 30. Yes. And I'll, it's a, a King James Version. Amen. He, he who is not with me is against me, and, who, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Thank you. He said, he that is not with me is against me. We're going back to how Satan can gain advantage if we are not diligent through indifference. Jesus said, if you're not with me, you just against me. Jesus ad, 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 admonished that he not with me is against me. Clearly states there is no middle course, that going back to that gray area, in relationship to authority of Christ as King and Lord. There are a lot of denominations, there are a lot of religions out there that they don't, they do not want to recognize Jesus as the Son of God. They want to identify him as everything else except Jesus the Christ. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So therefore, you either with me or you against me. Now you can preach and teach all you want 
hey, you can do this, you can do that. I don't understand how how people uh, they can read the King James Version, the 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 New King James Version, the English translation, they can the New Living Translation. You can read all these translations, and they pretty much saying the thing, and you still don't get that Jesus is the Son of God. My Lord, 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be ye steadfast. If you have some indifference going on with you, you can't be steadfast. You, if you have some indifference going on with you, you can't be unmovable. If you have some indifference going on with you, you can't always be abounding. Satan is looking for any nook, crack, or cranny to get in to get your mind twisted and toe up from the flow up. How does this plate to the doctrine of the resurrection. Paul answers, ye know that your labor is not in vain. For, don't miss this, for Paul, for Paul, now I ain't talking about everybody else now, I'm just talking about Paul. For Paul, it was more than faith. It was knowledge. Mm-hmm. It was a sure conviction that one day he would share in the glory of the resurrection. Well, Brother Wright, well, how, how, how can you say it was, it, it, Paul, it was more than faith, it was knowledge. Did we experience everything Paul experienced? Do we have the knowledge of what Paul went through? Did we see, uh, have we had a direct contact like Paul had on the road to Damascus? How many, how, how many uh, in here tonight had Paul experience like he had on road to Damascus? So by he having that experience, he had the knowledge also. Good. God Almighty. Mm, mm, mm. They even going back to, to Thomas. <laughs> he said, blessed those that believe and have not seen. Good God Almighty. I'm going to leave that thing alone. Mm. For some of us don't want to be steadfast. Some of us are movable on their faith. They are movable in the doctrine and teaching and on their belief. If you are not rooted, if you are not solid, if you are not sure, if you are not sure that your anchor is going to hold, Satan going to have a field day with you. He going to have a field day with you. Because every time the wind blows, you're going to lean that way. Every time the wind blow this way, you're going to go that way. Every time somebody who's been hollering, they'll do this or teach that. You need to be rooted on the solid rock. And that solid rock is Jesus the Christ. If too many people on social media lying, they, they, are, they just flat out be lying about the word of God. Satan may gain the advantage. Satan may gain the advantage through our neglect. Through our neglect. Hebrews 2, verses 1 through 3 teaches us. We must guard against inattention and neglect of God's message through his son. That going right back to what I'm talking about. Folk don't want to believe who Jesus is. Folk don't want to believe it. They want to neglect the truth. 
And that how Satan can gain advantage on so many people in this world today. My, yes, yes. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the thing which we have heard. Lest that at any time we should let them slip. Mm -hmm. for, the, for the word spoken by angels was steadfast. Uh -huh. And every transgression and disobedient received just as recompense of reward. Okay. Then it says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord? Mm -hmm. and was confirmed unto us by him that heard him. Mm -hmm. Number one, number one, number one, number one. Let's break this down. Number one, believers have heard from the Lord God because we have heard the gospel message. The author warns them not to be carried away by popular opinion that surround them. Instead, they were hold fast to Christ. Words because they were the words of God. Let's break this scripture down a little bit more. Number two, the word spoken through angels. The law was delivered from God to Moses by angels. You can write down Deuteronomy 33 and 2. Acts 7, 38, 53. Galatians 3 and 19. Then we're going to break it down on the third level. Number three, how shall we escape? If the people who heard the message delivered through angels were justly punished when they disobeyed the law, how can believers expect to escape punishment when they neglect the even greater message delivered through the greater messenger, the Son? Folks still don't want to believe. Folks still don't want to don't 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 want to listen. And, 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 and they think that there is not going to be any consequences. They think it's going to be, you're not going to have no penalties. So many think when you die, that's all that happens. So many think that there is no heaven. So many think that there is no hell. Okay, Second Peter five through thirteen. Second Peter one five through thirteen. Peter exhorts his readers to make their calling certain by faith and other virtues. Number five, and besides this, giving all don't miss that word diligence. Add to your faith. Virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patient, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly love, kindness, and to brotherly, and to brotherly kindness, charity. It's a lot going on. Be not deceived. Do not be indifferent. Do not neglect the gospel, for these things be in you and abound. They may make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But don't miss this one. But he that lacketh these things is blind. There's a whole lot of folk walking around with their eyes wide open, blind. Whole lot of folks in the church house, in the pulpit, in the choir, on the deacon board, on the mother board, blind. 
and cannot see a fall and have forgotten that he will purge from his old sin. Verse 10. Wherefore, the rather brother, wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and elect sure. Are you sure? Are you dug in with a man named Jesus? Or do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt? Do you know? Do you know? Mm. Do you know? If ye do these things, ye shall never fail. You will never fall. For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move to Peter's teaching and learning about this chapter. Peter's teaching and learning is important because it involved truth and error. What the students learn be, become, don't miss this, what a student learns become ingrained in the heart and soul. The student develop an attachment to it. If, it, if this learning is false, don't miss this, if this learning is false, and this was, and this was, um, and this what Peter was dealing with. If the learning is false, if the student comes to believe that something untrue is actually true, so much the worse. They even make it worse. It will be hard to convince the person otherwise. And if the truth or the error involved, our eternal, our eternal destiny, the stakes only goes up. Did anybody miss that? Anybody have any questions? Because I don't want to read something in here that someone has some question about. In other words, I'm going to use myself as an example. When I was a boy and everything, and, 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 and I grew up spiritually, I had to unlearn some things which I was taught. I had to unlearn some things, because everything in the, in the church I was taught, and when I grew old and I started standing for myself, hold, hold up, hold up now, I had to let that go. I had to Believe what the Bible said. Even something as simple as, uh, even we heard it about Eve ate the apple. The Bible never said anything about an apple. Uh huh. And even even something as as, 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 as going back to Paul to the road of Damascus. Uh, I, I heard a whole lot of preachers preach that 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 Paul was knocked off his horse. The Bible, the Bible ain't said nothing about no horse. The Bible said he was knocked off his beast. But we want to dress it up. We want to make things say that uh 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 smooth and shiny and polish it up to make it sound good. That's a lie. So we have to, sometimes we got to unlearn some things. I'm not talking about the folk that, uh, I'm not talking about the old school folk. They did the best they could. They did the best they could in the condition that they had because in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, and, and when I was going to church, a lot of those folk was up in their 70s and 80s. And a lot of folks in their 70s and 80s, they didn't have an opportunity to go to school like I did. So they talked the best that they could. And, and a whole lot of them couldn't, a lot of people down there in different churches and everything, a lot of them, they just didn't know. But we have no excuse. None. We're going to move on. 
We're going to move on. And that's the advantage of coming in, in-house. You have the handout. You can take it with you. <laughs> you have the handout. We're going to move to don't give Satan, don't give the devil a foothold. Satan may gain the advantage through our flirtation. Mm. Everybody know what flirting is, don't you? Everybody know what flirting is. Let me let me let me just break it down. Even even in high school, you know, I used to flirt with this girl in high school. I, just, I, I, I had some issues in high school. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna be transparent. I'm be, I had a preacher had some issues. I, I had curfew. I was a PK, and nobody wanted me. But nobody wanted to mess with the preacher kid. I was about that big, wet. I'm about <laughs> How about that? And I call myself flirting with this girl. This girl looked at me and walked off. Oh, good God, about it. I said, <laughs> made me feel bad. Made me feel, made me, made me, made me just feel bad. But, but flirting, a lot of times people flirt. Uh, flirting is stimulate the flush. When a person flirt, they. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of old school folks. They, a lot of folks uh, flirt with the eyes. Uh, they flirt with a smile. Uh, they flirt with a handshake. It's all kind of way, but but flirting uh, feeds the flush. Flirting make the flush feel good, and and. And when we look at it on the spiritual side, uh, we smiling at Satan. A lot of folks smiling <laughs> at Satan because Satan making our flesh feel good. You, you want to hug up with the devil while Satan is, is setting a spiritual death trap for the individual. Could you imagine uh, a baby pup, a, a baby puppy flirting with a king cobra? <laughs> a little puppy just want to play. He just wagging his tail. He having fun. He just running around just barking at that king cobra. And just don't know how close to death he is. And just and that's the way a lot of, of us are messing with Satan. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinner. Mm. If you're flirting, you better you better cleanse your hand. If you don't cleanse your hand, Satan's gonna get the advantage. Satan's gonna get the foothold on you and purify your heart. Ye double-minded, good God Almighty, you double-minded. A, a double-minded individual is a dangerous person. A double-minded individual can't be trusted. A double-minded individual is double-minded in all their ways. Uh, be, uh, 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 verse 9 said, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Lest your laughter turn into mourning. Mm -hmm. And your joy to heaviness. Uh, oh, yeah. The verse 10 said, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Now, let's break this scripture down. It says, submit, humble yourself. Submit, a combination of two words literally mean to place under, hence, subjection or submission. Draw nigh. This means implores to the listener to Complete a single or, or something like a definite act. Uh huh. Spirituality involves regeneration 
and revival, not just reformation. A new heart precedes a changed life. Let me say that again. You might want to write this down online. A new heart precedes a changed life. You say, humble yourself. A man who submit himself to the Lord will be exalted in ways which he himself could never accomplish. This primarily refers to one spiritual relationship with God. But what you're saying, preacher, you, you cannot have a healthy relationship with God if you still hugging the devil. I dare slow dragging with him. See, see, young folk, young folk, young folk don't understand. Is a difference between slow dancing and slow dragging. When you're slow dragging with the devil, you really tangle up with him. Good God Almighty! Ephesians four twenty two, almost done. Therefore, excuse me that ye put off concerning the formal conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. You want to flirt with the devil. Mm -hmm. that, how he get, that how he get a foothold on you. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, the devil want to get your mind. When the devil got your mind, he got your body. That's why the Bible says, renew the renewing of your mind. Paul said he died daily. Paul, the de you are under attack every day. Every day from Satan. Mm. Verse 24, Ephesians 4, 24. And that ye put on a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying. Mm -hmm. When you're lying, you're flirting with Satan. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. There's nothing wrong with a Christian getting angry. I heard a joker told me, you a Christian, you ain't supposed to get angry. You a lie. A whole lot of folks need to get angry. You need to start preaching right. All the all this corruption going on in the world, you need to get angry. Our children are under attack from all kind of wickedness and the transgenders and homosexualities and, and, and all this craziness and attacking our babies before they get into first grade. You need to get angry. You need to get angry. Polluting our baby mind before they can even walk. Yeah. Some people call that hate speech. You call it what you want to call it. If me telling you the truth is hate speak, I'm going to keep on hating. Good God Almighty. They're corrupting our babies. They don't want, and, and, and these and the so-called church, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to jump track right now. And these and the so-called Powerful preachers and anointed apostles and prophetes and prophets and all of this and all of that. You got all your title and you can't speak the truth. You have no spine for God. You have no backbone for God. God can fire you and you still be working for it. He will pull your anointing. I don't care how much you hoop. I don't care how much you scream. I don't care how much you yell. But you have no power coming from God. You'll be in self. 
and you will be a, a clown for Satan. There's enough clowns in the pulpit. Yes, yes. If you have a foul mouth, you're flirting with the devil. Yes, yes, yeah. Flirting with the devil. The devil loves everything you say. Yeah, you just old master mouth Christian. <laughs> oh, oh, who yuck mouth? Y'all don't know about old yuck mouth Christian. Yes, Lord, that back in the 70s right there. They call you yuck my whole spiritual, spiritual cavities all in the spiritual body. They up here? Yeah, man, sister. Good God Almighty. Yeah, yeah, we got some, we got some, 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 some church folk flirting with the devil. Every time they turn around, they'll cuss you out from head to toe. And then they'll holler hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. In the neck breath. <laughs> and then they won't lay hands on put some oil upside your head. And then they won't cuss you out and get you out the house. I mean, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's some tough folks. There's some tough folks around here now. He said that ye put off concerning formal conversation. Mm hmm He said, and be renewed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then he said, uh, wherefore, putting away lying. Mm-hmm. That lying all the time. He said, be ye angry, but sin not. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He said, do not. He said, do not go on being angry and let it not take root in your heart. Yes, see, 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 a lot of times the anger, if, if something take root, it's going to sprout. And it's going to manifest into something else. It said, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We moving right along, we moving right along. Satan may gain advantage through our overconfidence. Mm, Y'all tracking with me on, on, on the handout? You tracking with me? Satan may gain advantage through our overconfidence. These people, some of these people think that they know, they know, they know it all. They are always right. They can always give correction all day but can't receive one drop of correction. Do we know anybody like that? Do we have any family members like that? Do we have any cousins like that? Do we have any church folks like that? They always think that they are right. They can tell, they, I mean, they'll talk you, they'll, they'll talk you when you go to sleep and wake back up, they're still talking to you. <laughs> I'm joking those I'm talking so <laughs> but if you correct me one time, one time just one. Yeah, one time you correct them joker one time all hell gonna break loose yeah did the preacher say that yes I said it Yes, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. We moving along. Satan may gain advantage through excuse making. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I'm going to read this parable. Uh, this, this parable of the Great Supper. Christ showed how worldly men should be uh, shut out of heaven. Mm. I'm not going to, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm go ahead and roll with this. We're going to shut it down. Luke 14, starting at the 15th verse. We have, we in good time. And when one of them that sat at meal 
with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. Verse 17. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them at were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuses. Oh. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Satan can gain advantage through us by excuse making. Now, here we go. The first said unto him, I have brought a, a piece of ground, and I must need to go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. Mm -hmm. And another said, I have uh, bought five yokes of oxen. And I go to prove them. I pray thee, um, uh, thee have me excused. Okay, okay, okay. And another said, I have married a wife. Therefore, I cannot come. Okay, the general point here is that the man, don't miss this online. If you tune in, in, don't miss this. The main point, the general point is that the man regarded his own affairs more than the importance of the feast. Mm -hmm. So many. So many have excuses when it comes to obeying God. I would have, but I could do this, but you know I would do that, but I should, but. Let me just share something with you. Maybe I can help somebody out. When a person don't want to do something, any excuse will do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When a person don't want to do something, any excuse will do. They even, they're going all the way back to the Garden of Eden. <laughs> God was talking to Adam. I'm just paraphrasing. Adam, what happened now? You done done something, Adam. Adam said, well, it's that woman. <laughs> it's that woman you gave me. You don't believe me, you read Genesis 3, verses 12 through 13. Oh, yeah. See, one, when we regard our own affairs before God, there's a problem. There's a problem. Excuses. Excuses, excuses. People are going to be making excuses until they die. But when we die, excuses won't, won't, won't help. It won't matter. It won't help you because God is giving us a chance right now while the blood is running warm in our veins to do what we're supposed to do. And a lot of people say, well, I'm not going to come back to the church house until I get myself together. That is another tactic Satan used to keep you right where you are. How can you get yourself together when you didn't create yourself? How can you get yourself together when you can't even forgive your, forgive your sins? 
You need the blood of Jesus Christ. And Satan want to keep you lingering and lingering and lingering for him to get that foothold, to get that stronghold, to get that advantage of you, to keep you doing just what you are doing and miss your relationship with Christ. Miss eternal salvation through Christ. Miss heaven and wind up in hell. See, a lot of folks don't want to talk about heaven and hell. They won't talk about they want to talk about prosperity. Okay. Get all the prosperity you want. But you better make sure your soul saved. Where's there no conviction? There's no repentance. Where's there no conviction? There's no repentance. Thank you for joining us, Church of the Living God Bible Study. I truly, truly pray that something was shared to be a blessing with you. Do not give the devil a foothold in your life. Mm. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I thank you for all your prayers. I thank you for all your encouragement. Thank you for all your.